As South Africa faces a high number of teenage pregnancies, the Stop Stockouts Project Survey highlighted the contraceptive shortage in public health facilities. According to their report titled Contraceptive Supply Chain, Stockouts and Their Courses, contraceptive shortage and unavailability have become prevalent in the country, particularly in the Eastern Cape, Northwest and KwaZulu-Natal. The survey was conducted in intervals of three months between April 2022 and June 2023, which indicated that between April and June 2023, 36% of women said contraceptives were not available in 31 medical facilities in KwaZulu-Natal. The Eastern Cape recorded, uh, recorded a 7% difference from KwaZulu-Natal because 29% of respondents stated that contraceptives were unavailable in 30 surveyed medical facilities. To discuss this, we're joined by Dr. Jess Russell, Principal Investigator, The Just Agency. She joins us from Cape Town, South Africa. Hello, Dr. Russell. Thank you for joining us at this time. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. What are the primary factors contributing to the shortage of women's contraceptives in South Africa? How do these factors intersect with broader healthcare accessibility issues? So our research reveals the current as well as the earlier causes of contraceptive stockouts in South Africa lie at the national and provincial levels. Our findings identify poor national procurement planning as the main driver of contraceptive depletion, as well as stockouts between 2015 and 2020. It's quite an interesting story here. Um, what led to this major ongoing stockout? Poor planning in this case resulted from the Affordable Medicines Directorate, the Department of Health, and the Department of Women. Those are the main agencies, the, the national departments overseeing women's health care. And the poor planning resulted from these particular departments not anticipating a deplete, depletion in national stock due to the state donating contraceptives to an international um, randomized clinical trial that is well known called the ECHO trial. Um, it was also due to these departments not anticipating market anxiety relating to the anticipated outcome of the trial, which is said to have examined the relationship between the use of the three-month injectable contraceptive depot provera and a potential increased risk of HIV. The, the ECHO trial concluded in 2019. It found that there wasn't a relationship between these two um, these two things. Um, however, this poor planning related to not anticipating widespread contraceptive stackouts due to manufacturers halting production um, in anticipation of the trial results, a lack then of supplier competition, and a weakened national position to negotiate contracts. Um, this impacted the procurement of contraception for several years in South Africa. Um, in addition to this, the primary cause at the national level is provincial budgetary limitations, incompatible electronic information systems, poor management of mm. payment ordering and stock systems, and inadequate human resources and storage. All right, These all, right. all uh, doc Dr. Russell. contribute to the current stockouts that are ongoing. All right, now, Dr. Russell, now in your analysis, uh, what impact has the contraceptive shortage, you know, had on women's health, you know, family planning, and also reproductive rights in South Africa? Well, so it's important, as you said earlier, the Stop Stockouts Project has been conducting assessments of stockouts of contraception since 2018. Now, these current findings um, build on what we've been tracking since then, that there is... Um, a reported shortage of injectable contraception, and that is the largest and most consistent um, shortage that we have in South Africa. Read collectively over the years, 
Our findings show that there's a crisis in access to contraception in South Africa. Arguably, this could have contributed to higher rates of adolescent pregnancy, as you mentioned earlier, um, and really poor planning that results in five years of limited access to contraception for women and girls is consequently a result of inadequate national leaderships and de deficits in accountability and transparency. Okay. This points to a lack of prioritization of gender equality, sexual reproductive health, and this prolonged decrease in access to a variety of contraceptive methods, we argue, also indicates a departure by the state from a human rights approach to health care. Okay. These are very serious issues. All right. Well, thank you for speaking to us on this, Dr. Roussel. We appreciate your fair time. Thank you very much.